Welcome everyone. This is a short video in which we will be getting introduced to what is blueprint and the practical part of creating a blueprint specification table. Let me introduce myself. I am Ms. Azma Hussain Liaqat. In this video, I will be talking to you about a brief introduction to blueprint and in the other half of this video, we will be doing a practical session. So let's get started. What is a blueprint or table of specification? A blueprint or table of specification is a two-way chart which describes the topics to be covered by a test and the number of items or points which are associated to each topic. As we all know that when we start a course or design a course, we look at the course learning outcomes. All these course learning outcomes are in line with our topics, whatever topics, chapters or units we are going to cover during the semester. Now these topics or units we will be testing them right and these tests will be having some points or marks associated to them. So we will be assigning the points or marks on the basis of the importance we give to each topic or the each course learning outcome. So in brief we can say a blueprint or a test specification table is a layout which will help us to design a better valid test. Next, when is blueprint or table of specification created? Usually blueprint or test specification table is created before a test is written. But it is best created at the beginning of each teaching session. At the, at the beginning of each teaching session, when we create a blueprint, it gives a clear picture to all the course sharing teachers. In a scenario like us in English department where we are dispersed into many geographical locations, a blueprint or a test specification table will help us to uniform our assessment policies. Every course sharing teacher will be very clear what is to be followed and this will help us to unify our assessment. So I think that it's really better that a test specification table or blueprint is created at the beginning of each teaching session. Now, what is the purpose of creating a blueprint or a test specification table? First, we achieve a balance in the test and to identify the achievement of CLO that is the course learning outcomes. We also measure the domains here and we see that a fair balance of question paper appears on the test or the questions appear on the test. So basically it helps us to have a good balanced test. Next. It also helps us to focus and put alignment to the course learning outcomes, contents, the marks given to these contents and the time or importance we give to these topics while teaching. So with the help of a blueprint, all these things are aligned and balanced. Next, it also helps us to have a valid test. When we balance all these things and when we align them very well, our test validity is for sure. 
because we will focus on different questions and the balance of the course learning outcomes achieved is maintained the last thing is assessment is uniform here we mean that all the course sharing teachers will follow the same assessment policies and the blueprint will help us to us attain this uniform mitty throughout the geographical areas now the three domains which we use in our table of specification are knowledge skills and competencies when we say knowledge it includes the facts information concepts principle theories for each course skills is nothing but the application of knowledge which the students attain from the starting lessons it is also a practical form so after we teach certain units our students acquire the basic knowledge or information about the course and then they move on to apply this knowledge in a practical manner this is skills the last one is competencies competencies is nothing but the independent ability or the individual performance of each student it includes independence creativity time management problem solving critical thinking and the responsibility students take to do a task so these are the three domains which we will cover in our table of specification what are the columns used in our test specification table basically we will move on with the first column the course learning outcomes the course learning outcomes will differ for every course and we can pick these course learning outcomes from a course specification the next column is the program learning outcome code here we mean that each course learning outcome is aligned with the program learning outcome and a code is given like clo 1.1 is in line with k1 that is plo program learning outcome 1 so like this each course learning outcome is aligned with the program learning outcome so the code of this is we can pick this also from the course specification next column is the topics chapters or units we will be covering during our semester then allotted contact hours for teaching each topic chapter or unit is allotted certain number of hours like we allot 3 hours 6 hours 9 hours depending on the length of the chapter or topic weightage of marks weightage of marks is here how many marks we are going to allot to each course learning outcome or each domain and then we distribute these marks overall in our objective subjective questions quiz midterm assignments and final exam so a whole layout of marks can be clearly seen or designed in the test specification table as we have discussed already the learning domains we will focus on the three learning domains the knowledge skill and competencies then we move on to the subjective questions with subjective questions it is essays around 200 words short notes around 100 words short answers around 50 words so these are the different types of subjective questions we can move ahead with our quizzes assignments midterms and finals the objective questions the objective questions will be fill in the blanks 
multiple choice questions match the following true or false and the type of assessment tools we use in our department are quiz midterm assignments or presentations and the final exams so the, these are the basic columns which will which are present in our table of specification excel sheet now what are the files needed to create a blueprint or a test specification table we can create a blueprint or a test specification table with just two simple files the blueprint excel sheet and the course specification file now let's move on and do it practically i will be taking my course on short stories and i will be doing it practically with you so that things get better and clear now i will be focusing and letting you know the data which we will pick up from the course specification so for example i have taken my short story course the course code is here 332 so this is the basic information we will require to fill in our excel sheet then as we move on we will require our course learning outcomes so we will pick up the course learning outcomes from here the clos and we will also require the plo code this is the plo code k2 k2 s1 s2 c3 so this is the plo code which we will be filling in our excel sheet now when we move on further we need the list of topics from the course content so from the list of topics from the course contents and the contact hours these are the credit hours we assign to each topic so we will pick up the topics and the contact hours from our course content now we need to design our contact hours to be 45 as this semester it goes with 45 hours now from the teaching and assessment part here we will focus on the assessment methods what are the different assessment methods followed as you can see for clo 1.1 i can follow all these assessment methods that is mcqs fill in the blanks match the following one line answer short answers essay answers so each clo here has the assessment methods clearly given so we can opt for any of these methods in our excel sheet now from the assessment task for students we need to know how many marks the weightage of marks given to the quiz midterm assignment and final so here in my course i have a quiz of 10 marks a midterm of 20 marks a as an assignment of 10 marks and a final of 60 making the total to be 100 so this can vary for each course so when you are designing your assessment tool you have to check the different tasks and the weightage given to them 
So these are the basic data or what we will pick up to put in our Excel sheet. So now let's move on to the Excel. This is our blueprint specification table for formative and summative assessment. Here the course title. So my course is short story so I'll go and write short story. The course code. The course code is ENG Three, three, two. This is my course code. Now, the credit hours allotted to this course are three. I can pick them up from the list or I can just write three. And to which level does this course belong? Now, short story course is a level six course. So, I am going to put here level six. Right? So this is the basic information I am going to fill about my course. Marks allotted are already here. They are 100 because the whole semester we assess on 100 marks. And the semester is 2021. This is our first semester. So we will write one. If it's our second semester, we will write 2020, 2022. Now let's move on. The first column here is the course learning outcomes. In this Excel sheet, there are seven CLOs mentioned. Now, these, the count of CLOs may vary for each course. And according to the nature of the course, may, maybe there are five CLOs, six CLOs, 7 CLOs, some courses may have more than that, but the minimum requirement is 6 CLOs. Now, the next column is the PLO code. As I told you and showed you in our course specification, the PLO code is the code aligned, the course learning outcomes are in line with the program learning outcomes like the K1, K2. Next column is about the topics and chapters or units covered. So now, then we have the contact hours, the weightage of marks. Here the learning domains, under learning domains we have three columns, knowledge, skill and competency. Then we have subjective question. Under subjective question column, we have essay short answer, short notes and short answers. In objective questions, we have fill in the blanks, match the following and true or false. And the last column here goes with types of assessment tools. And here under this, we have four assessment tools, quiz, midterm, assignment or presentation and final exam. So now let's pick up our course learning outcomes. So let me go back to the course specification and see how many course learning outcomes do I have in my course. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 course learning outcomes. So let me just copy them to my Excel. So in the first one I am going to copy then come back and do the same for all the CLOs. Copy.
control C, control V. Just double click, give space and control V. This is my fourth. And the last one. So now my course basically has five course learning outcomes. Let me just align them. I can wrap the text so that they can come in one cell. I can make it a little bigger. The same I'll do for the next one. Format cell, alignment, wrap text and I will just increase the size of the cell. Now I have copied all the five post learning outcomes. Now. 6 and 7 I don't have so I can clearly delete them now basically course learning outcomes depend on each course sometimes if the course is only for two hours the course learning outcomes may be less the nature of the course basically we usually say that 6 is good for 3 hours course but it depends on the nature of the course we can't fix the course learning outcomes to any number it varies from course to course like this is a literature course so we go with five it's up to another literature course may go with six or someone may go up till seven or eight so it basically depends on the number of hours you are teaching and the nature of the course if it's literature linguistic skills and even under literature it can vary depending upon the subject in skills and also in linguistics so I can remove these two now so I have my course learning outcomes ready now let me align and now again let's move on and open the course specification here I have my PLOs so this is the code so I'm going to pick it from here so my first CLO is aligned with K2 and my second CLO is also aligned with K2 so I can just do control C move on and fill here as I know both are K2 so I will do the same pasting then my CLO3, let me check. My CLO3 is aligned with S1 and CLO4 is S2. If you want, you can copy paste or you can directly write it. So now first two I did copy paste. Now I can just write S1 and S2. Now my last CLO is aligned with c3 that is plo3 so competency so let me go and write here c3 so now all my plo codes are available now we can move on to the next column that is the topics so I'll come to the course contents now as I have a lot of subtopics here I will pick up the main topic my main topic here is introduction to story so now introduction to story let me see my first PLO 